and a very warm welcome to a brand new edition of our telecast of the FIFA World Cup right here on Rajya Sabha Television. I'm your host Frank Rausen Pereira. With me, Nilanjan Datta, media officer of the Indian national team, and Jyoti and Bharat, former Indian national players. Both teams are talking about winning this match. They want to win this match, but both teams have also said, media press is right that the best teams will not be played again. Yeah, it depends because you know what uh, in this match happens, such a, in such a match what happens is the coaches may be willing to give chances to players who have not had a feel of the World Cup. It's not necessarily all the squad of 23 gets a taste to play in the World Cup. So that danger of that third place match always stays there. But again, uh, maybe one or two more changes. I don't see total overhauling because all said and done 20 years from now or 16 years from now, 50 years from now, people will look back and say, who finished third in that World Cup? Oh, they finished third in the World Cup. If the teams are not so serious, Jyoti, let's talk about our coverage of the World Cup. We've had a good time over the last one year calling the matches uh, thus far. Calling them a bit wrong sometimes because it's <laughs> been so unpredictable, but yeah, I've enjoyed, you know, this World Cup to its fullest. It's been a very interesting World Cup, uh, mixed results, uh, unexpected results, and uh, most of all, entertaining football to watch. Uh, you know, you have to, we had to really, literally watch games till the end to know who's going to win. Several was... matches were either drawn or won after uh, full-time and in added time, and that's what kept this World Cup on its toes and kept us guessing and kept us you know, motivated to watch the World Cup more as well. Talking about motivation, of course, it is often the key factor in a match for third place and Belgium may have the stronger impetus tonight with this being the last World Cup for many of their players. On the other hand, lifting England's disappointed heads less than 72 hours after their World Cup dream slipped away will be the real test for Gareth Southgate. Both teams have stressed on the importance of winning this match and finishing in third place. Let's take a look at both teams' preparations. this is one of the toughest games a player will have to prepare for. Having come so close to sporting immortality, Belgium and England must now recompose themselves and go in with a renewed sense of purpose to win tonight's match. The current Belgian side has been touted as potential world beaters for some time and with several members of their ranks on the wrong side of 30, the disappointment of missing out on World Cup glory will be there. But tonight's match could also end up as their best performance at a World Cup. One, and I think that's a, a very easy position we we want to win. Uh, I think when you when you finish the tournament, you you get a you carry the feeling of the last game, and we know that, and and that's important to be aware. We've been working now. We've been a month. We arrived on the 13th of June into Russia. It's been a, a an incredible experience. Everyone that has been part of the of the Belgium team has performed in an incredible manner from not just the players but everyone around the team. And I think every Belgium fan deserves that winning feeling at the end of this tournament. England, on the other hand, have one of their youngest ever squads to appear at the finals. Third place would be a big achievement for the Three Lions too since last triumphing in 1966. If they win tonight, it will also see them equal the recent fate of their women's team who earned bronze at the FIFA Women's World Cup in 2015. We've raised expectation, I don't see a problem with that, because we've also raised belief in the players and we've raised their enjoyment of playing and they can now associate playing with England with enjoyment, fun and not being under siege and um, feeling as if everything is against them. There's, there's an energy and a, a connection back and I think that's important for the team not only in the short term but in the mid to long term as well. England is likely to make a host of changes to the side with the team's youngsters and those who haven't been able to play yet being given a chance. 
Belgium could bring fullback Thomas Munier into the side as he is available for selection after missing the semi-final due to suspension. Raj Yadav's report for Rajya Sabha TV. All right then, so that's how the teams have prepared for this third place match of the FIFA World Cup. Let's go across to our stats zone now where Tina Jai is standing by to get us the latest stats on this match. Thank you, Frank. Welcome to the Stat Zone. I'm Tina Jha. The penultimate day of the FIFA World Cup is here. History will be made tomorrow when Croatia takes on France in the final. But tonight, the losing teams of the semi-finals will play for the third place. Belgium and England both have enjoyed memorable World Cup journeys in Russia this summer. Both will look to end their campaigns on a high note in St. Petersburg tonight. Did you know that Belgium is the team with the second most appearances at the World Cup without lifting the trophy? Mexico is the only team ahead of the Red Devils on that count. Coming back to the match, the two teams have faced each other 22 times in the past. England have the upper hand with 15 wins while Belgium has won three. But their most recent meeting came at this World Cup in the group stage where Belgium prevailed with a 1-0 scoreline. What does Belgian coach Roberto Martinez have in mind for his starting 11 tonight? Well, there is news that the lineup might see some major changes with Thomas Munier coming back. Let's focus on Torgan Hazard, Thomas Munier, and goalkeeper Thibaut Kotwa. Eden Hazard's younger brother Torgan has played 13 matches for his country, scoring just one goal. Maybe his elder brother will send him onto the pitch with some lessons on how to increase that tally tonight. Thomas Munier is a right back who claims that his team is better than England and so has a better chance at winning tonight. Munia has played 29 matches, scoring five goals. Let's also focus on the key man at the back, Thibaut Kotwa. The Belgian goalkeeper has been phenomenal this World Cup with a high save rate of 78.6%, having made 22 saves. England's squad are one of their youngest ever to appear at the finals. So while the sense of a last chance is not there, one of a missed opportunity is. Let's focus on Marcus Rashford, Eric Dyer, and Jamie Wardy. Marcus Rashford has made clear his intent of leaving Russia with a medal. The 20-year-old forward has played 24 matches for his country already, scoring three goals. But he has not yet scored at the World Cup. So will tonight be the night for him? After his team's semi-final loss to Croatia, Eric Dyer reassured English fans the squad will bounce back stronger than ever from the World Cup heartbreak. The team will be playing for some consolation, with Dyer also looking to increase his goal tally tonight. 31-year-old Jamie Wardy has been a late bloomer for his team, but he has been making up for lost time with his energetic performances. He has played 26 matches for England, scoring seven goals. Let's now talk about the top two goal scorers of this World Cup. Can Romelu Lukaku catch up with Harry Kane to earn the golden boot? Although Big Rome and his team say this is not an obsession for him, it could prove to be an interesting storyline during the match. Kane has already scored six goals, including three penalties. Lukaku scored his four goals during the first two matches. Over to you, Frank. Thank you, Tina, for taking us through the stats of uh, this particular match between England and Belgium. Both teams lost their respective semi-finals and they are playing for the third place in the FIFA World Cup. The match, of course, is due to begin in just a few minutes. Dilanjit, um, how do you motivate yourself to play in a match like this? Because everyone plays to win the World Cup and then going out to the semi-finals, hearts broken, you know, battered legs, battered knees, battered elbows. How do you motivate yourself? Well, that's uh, the professionalism of a player. In fact, I believe so, of modern day football or modern day sports. Dream shattered, uh, unwilling body, willing mind or vice versa or both unwilling. You have to pull yourself. And you know, when it pains, it pains the most when you go back to the team hotel, the official hotel. That's when all in solitude, you go back to the match which you have lost, the semi-final for both cases uh, of the teams and then you understand all oh, the dreams which we had 
so near and yet so close and no one guarantees whether four years down the line you'll get a chance or not very likely you said how does one motivate i believe that's the motivation and the life of a footballer uh, you need to motivate yourself playing for the country is the biggest motivation for any sports person nothing can supersede that ever and this is the world cup again uh, world cup again to prove that we were third out there uh, that's a huge motivation in itself uh, the tempo obviously and the mindset would be a bit different without any doubt but again the world cup playing for your country a job yet to be done another international match fifa rankings matter a bronze medal kind of thing that's the motivation fans <laughs> <laughs> fans definitely indeed you know you do want to send your fans back and home. sometimes teams come back with a vengeance mm. teams are either so much demotivated that they lose track of such such matches sometimes team come back with a vengeance oh they killed us let's kill them kind mm. of kill them mm. in the sense let's decimate them and win this one so that's also the added factor bonus factor you know should it be left up to players jyoti at a time like this when you're just not playing for everything but playing for say a third spot in the world cup would you have played this match if you were there for sure definitely i think you know as a footballer you love the sport and and all these players are there you know to to play what a sport that they love and i'm sure each one of them wants to get on that field again and play today uh, regardless of what you know this is third place match or fourth place match or whatever it is they just want to play because that's what they love doing so regardless of you know the consequences of this match i'm sure all the players uh, want to be on that field today and they all have something to prove because you know this is they have their squads that seem undone by this world cup and uh, at least belgium i know for sure uh, you know this golden generation i'm sure you know, they they thought they had this in the bag really and same with england actually but maybe not so expected as belgium but both these teams believe that they have it in them to have won this world cup so i feel going out today they have so much to prove to everyone watching around the world that you know they were a great side and maybe just on the day on that semi final they won good enough you know uh, and how do you forget the pain hmm. the only way to forget the pain is as she very rightly said get back on the field do what you do best and do what you love and as far as the coach is concerned does he have any issues because you know there are several players that he has not played through the course of the tournament because it's a big squad at the end of the day but only 11 get a chance to play uh, you know in the world cup so does he play some of those players that have not played yeah, in the world yeah, cup so much, far very much why not because a coach given a chance in an international friendly they would be wanting to have maybe six substitutes in the match each and every match only three three are allowed in such matches uh, this gives a chance maybe to the youngsters whom uh, can have a feel of a world cup experience is all about you won't get the chance to get the baptism of the world to give a baptism of the world cup to them some four years down the line you never know there may be some senior players it was a tough call for a coach to take between a or b okay let's give him a chance let's see what my future plans are coach will be looking at the future plans okay this is done what next who fits into my plan for the next 2 3 4 years and the next world cup okay let me start to look at them sometimes tough decisions as always both european teams they have to look uh, look up to a big tournament coming up in 2 years exactly from now exactly the euros are there as you very rightly pointed out so all of that thought process goes into the minds of a coach it's always looking to the future talking about looking to the future is the future over do you think after this match for some players that will probably play for both these two teams uh more so belgium than england i think the english squad is younger than the belgian squad uh i feel a couple of players from the, this you know golden generation will retire after this world cup um i you know can't say for sure that is obviously dependent on squad selection and how the players feel themselves um but you never know you know in, in a game like football anything can take you out at any point an injury can change your life so for you know as a player you take every game one game at a time and although this may be the last for some people for sure you never know when your last game is you know <laughs> around the corner so yeah. it's a big it's a big game it's a world cup stage at the end of the day and and all these players have something to prove you know talking about something to prove there's a battle within the battle harry kane and lukaku <laughs> on 4 and 6 as far as the race for the golden boot is concerned is that battle going to play out on field today you trust both starts both start in fact uh, then it, everyone the fans will also be looking up to them and if lukaku scores and kane scores again 
it's a high scoring match let it be a high scoring match not much of a tactical match where one is going into the shell trying to envelop the other team and then going on to the attack free play free flowing football easier said than done though looking forward to a high scoring match and let both of them score and be an healthy competition will the race for the golden boot be sealed today in london do you think because if you look at the closest competitor for Kane is Lukaku on four, and then there is Mbappe, and there is Griezmann on three each. And I doubt that they'll it, make it, up the it, gap it, in the it, final. I see that to be seen today, because in a World Cup final, is never a one-sided match. Has never been. Whoever the teams have played, I believe it's between these two gentlemen, ind individuals, and it's to be done today. You know, let's go back to the group stages. Belgium won the match against England one nil. What is it that England have to do differently today if they have to win, Jyoti? Um, not just at group stage, just looking and learning from their last game. You know, a game is not over till it's over, till that final whistle goes. Oh, very nice. And and the way they played in their semi-final, there was so much for them to take away from that game because I felt they switched off after the 70th minute. I think after that they just thought, oh, another 20 minutes and then we can just hold them, hold them and, and we'll get through. And I think that was the biggest learning experience going into today's game for them. Uh, that they have to play this out for the full 90 minutes. Um, and of course, from the group stages, I think they, you know, any team who loses, since they're going up against each other again, England will want to, you know, they have a point to prove against Belgium. And, and I'm sure they want to get back at them. Players to watch out for, do you think, uh, Nilanjan, today, who would be... Let's, let's not talk about the big ones that you've spoken about right through the course of the, of the tournament. Any surprise element today? Uh, if Marcus Rashford starts, much has been talked about him. Young guy has shown his promise at the EPL, at the world stage, hasn't been there. Uh, if you want to really make a mark at the world stage, this is your stage, baby. Otherwise, you are not good enough. You are also one of those who played with a lot of promise, was not good enough at the highest level. So, the experience of watching it from the bench, the pain of losing the semi-final and also coming in in crucial junctures, as and when he was made to come on as a substitute, should be helping him to mature, I believe so. He's only and 20 years old. Exactly, only so. 20. And uh, he should be means starting his journey from here in the World Cup at the international level. Jyoti, any, anyone to watch out for other than the top hot favourites today? See, I think uh, Belgium will be boosted by the return of Munir. He missed out on the semi-final and uh, I don't think Chadley really did justice to his position on the right wing. So it'll be interesting to see him coming back, how that's going to change the dynamics of the team. Also, I'm, I'm interested to see uh, the junior uh, Hazard. Hazard on, Thorgan on, Hazard. I yes. always feel, you know, as a, as a second child myself, you always somehow in, in, in the shadows Shadow, of yeah. your, your elder sibling. So I, I think he's a good player and he's always in the shadows of Eden Hazard. And, I'll, it'll be interesting to see how he does. Let's hope that the match itself is interesting. It's uh, going to start in just a few minutes, of course, and we hope that uh, it lives up to the hype of a World Cup bronze match. Well, we'll slip into a short break now. On the other side, we'll take a look at which are the teams that were unlucky in this tournament thus far. Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha TV's coverage of the FIFA World Cup. I'm Frank Rausen Pereira. Well, the World Cup has seen several mouth-watering clashes and shock results from the ouster of heavyweights to stunning performances from the underdogs. 
Uh, there were several teams at this World Cup who many would have expected to lift the title, but they were unfortunate enough to be eliminated at the group stage or in the knockouts. Let's take a look at the most unfortunate teams of this World Cup. The FIFA World Cup has come close to its end, with only one team being crowned as a world champion on Sunday. But World Cup 2018 has been full of shocks and surprises. With underdogs performing exceptionally well and big teams making an early exit, this edition of the World Cup has been full of twists and turns. Many football giants made an early exit from the tournament like Argentina, Brazil and Portugal, but the most unfortunate among them all was defending champion Germany, which was unable to reach even the knockout stages of the tournament and were eliminated from the group stage by South Korea. The 2014 world champions and number one team in the FIFA rankings started their campaign as favourites, but crashed out of the first round of the World Cup for the first time since 1938. They started their World Cup campaign with a 0-1 loss against Mexico, which was their only loss in the opening game since 1982. But in their second game against Sweden, they breathed new life into their World Cup defence, defeating the Swedes 2-1 but they needed a win against South Korea in their final group game to move to the knockout phase. The giant has woken up. But the Asian team played exceptional football to eliminate the defending champions who conceded twice in injury time. Another unfortunate team in the tournament was South American giants Argentina who reached the knockout phase but were unable to move ahead. Their misfortune can be seen in the fact that their biggest star, Lionel Messi, missed a second-half penalty against Iceland as the World Cup debutants secured a famous 1-1 draw against Argentina in the opening game. In their second group game, Argentina was up against Croatia, but the Croats stunned the two-times World Cup winners with a 3-0 victory, leaving the South Americans in serious danger of exiting at the group stage. But in their final group game, they defeated Nigeria 2-1 and managed to move to the round of 16. In the round of 16, misfortune struck again as the Argentines faced France to seal a quarter-final spot and despite having a 2-1 lead, they went down 3-4 to lose the game. Oh yes, France in this seesaw game! Five-time world champions Brazil was another unlucky team in the tournament as they made a stuttering start to their World Cup campaign and Switzerland dug their heels in for a 1-1 draw in their opening group game. In the next game, the Brazilians were up against Costa Rica and the game was at a stalemate till 90 minutes. But two late goals by Felipe Coutinho and Neymar gave them victory. In their final group game, they were up against Serbia, eliminating them to secure a place in the round of 16. In the round of 16, they edged out Mexico with a 2-0 victory to reach the World Cup quarterfinals for a seventh consecutive time. But their real test came in this stage where they faced Belgium. Brazil started out as favourites to win, but Belgium's superb first-half display ended Brazil's hope of a record sixth World Cup crown. Kumar Abhishek's report for Rajya Sabha TV. One of the biggest, if not the biggest win in their history. So, there you have it. The first team, the first big name to be out of this World Cup was Germany after that loss to South Korea. 2-0 was the scoreline in favour of South Korea. Nilanjan, you called it the highlight of the tournament. An Asian team beating a European the super world power. Champions. Super power. Absolutely. Not just the world champions, but world champions on several occasions. Absolutely. You know, would you still call it the highlight? Very much. If you ask me to pick a single match, I believe it defined the total mood of the World Cup, the unpredictability, the emergence of so-called weaker or smaller nations and taking a challenge at the so-called powerful and tradi traditional footballing nations. Uh, Germany, synonymous with the World Cup, uh, kind of sentimental favourites, they have won it so many times. But again, we're not in the usual self what they have been since even 2006, 10, 14, where they were last world champions. Some of the boys were missing, the spark wasn't there. The gelling or the conglomeration of the veterans or the experienced players with the juniors were not perfect. In crunch situations, they lost it and bowed out in the first round itself. Finished fourth in the group for a yeah, world champion. Four, yeah, finished fourth in the group. That for shows world, how yeah. football is progressing.
You know, Names won't win you matches. Talking about Germany, in Ilan, uh, uh, Jyoti, I'm sorry. Uh, were they unfortunate or were they just not good enough? They were just not good enough. I don't think. <laughs> I think they were slow. I think they were just... They seemed offbeat. They just didn't gel, as Nenanjan said. And, you know, they just did not look uh, like a World, a World Cup winning side when we saw them get on the field. And, I mean, if that... If this is the cause of few players having retired, then it's it's very strange because you know with without Schweinsteiger and Lahm, this it looks like a completely different team. So the team we and, saw and they, they were the only ones missing actually if you look at it. And Podolski. And Podolski, of course. Yeah. But yeah. But I mean, for pretty three, much the same team. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same, and it's ama that's a, it's amazing to see how four years can make such a huge difference to a football player's life. Sure, yes, no. Uh, what surprised me was that Confederations Cup a year back, they were dominant. They won it with a kind of under 23, under 24 squad. Maybe not playing the senior players at that time in Russia. And now bringing on the seniors, the coach was in a dilemma, should I go with them, should I stick to them? Maybe that was one of the reasons because the same under-23 side, kind of under-23 side or the second string, dominated the Confed Cup last year around this time, means a month prior, around four years, a year back, and had won the Confederations Cup. Same let's, Germany. Let's now move on from Germany and talk about your favourite team, Argentina. <laughs> I thought they were lucky to get past the first stage. Very much. Very much. Uh, without, they lacked idea on the field. Uh, obviously, I'm not a coach and maybe sounding like a so-called philosopher, if I say so, uh, trying to be a perfectionist, there was absolutely no strategy. They didn't know what the weapons were, as France know what the weapons are. Croatia knows what the weapons are. Coach Sampaoli had absolutely no idea. The biggest player on the earth, he was played in the wrong position. Midfield was almost non-existent. Defence, was there any? We don't know. The goalkeepers made blunders. It was a team which had the legacy, in, wearing the legacy in stripes, the famous Argentine jersey. Was one of the most, most, if I can say, means hopeless Argentine sides I've seen ever. Looked totally lost on the field. Some flashes of brilliance, but not the Argentina. We are. Jyoti, what went wrong for Argentina? Um... Were they, know, were they just too many old players? I mean, the coaching see, staff See, I think, I think their good. strike force was a bit old, a um, bit slow. Um, and secondly, I think uh, I think them qualifying for the World Cup were the uh, first signs of, you know, mm. this team not being good enough for the stage because they just about scraped in through the World Cups and the, the World Cup and then they got the same squad in. They had young players on the bench like Dabala and people, you know, who've been performing at club level who on the bench and people like Gwen and Aguero were starting for them each and every time and not performing. So, And there was no change of strategy, just the same strategy that wasn't working for them. Alright, I think with that, we'll call it a wrap on this telecast of uh, the FIFA World Cup for today. Thank you, Nilanjan and Jyoti for joining me on the programme and putting things into perspective for us. We'll go out now and watch the third place match between England and Belgium. But let me remind you before we go, that will be back tomorrow at 6 p.m. We've got a mega show lined up for you. We'll be telecasting live from 6 to 8 p.m. And we'll get you some fantastic analysis as well as some brilliant inputs from some kids that we are going to bring here to our studio. Some slum kids who believe that football is everything for them. That's it. See you again tomorrow.